What's going on, Loop Community? This is Jansen, the Director of Training and Support. And right here today, I have the new and improved update for Prime version 3.2. And we have a lot of great uh, new additions to the app. Uh, I'm running this on uh, both the most recent version of iOS for iPhone. I have iPhone 7 Plus along with uh, the newest version of Prime. So let's dive right in and take a look at the uh, new features. So uh, first off, you'll notice that you've seen this audio waveform view before, um, but now there's a couple of new things that, have, that are added to it. So uh, in the navigation up top, you have the plus and minus buttons, which will allow you to zoom in and out of the waveform view. You can scroll left and right here to see the stem list. Uh, and there's a loop functionality button here where you can actually loop it once through the section or loop that section indefinitely until you turn it off. Uh, and most of the other stuff is the same. In order to get to your set list manager, you'll need to hit one, two, three, pop this out to the left and you'll see the songs that are in your set list. You can add songs here uh, and it'll bring up your uh, set list that said fail to get data because my Wi-Fi is off uh, and my LTE is off as well. So uh, you can scroll through the songs you have and add them. You can even add a click track uh, and you can see all that's there. Uh, and so you can tap cancel, go back. Uh, you can tap the auto advance feature here, the arrow next to the song. So when it gets to the end of the song, uh, it'll automatically go to the next song in your set list without having uh, to actually do it manually yourself. You can edit the set list as well and uh, grab these three little horizontal bars to the right and move them up and down in your set list uh, if you have more songs, if you want to reorder the list. And you can actually even load set lists. Um, if, well, if you have a saved set list, you go to the set list manager and load those set lists that you've created with the songs in there. Let's say if you had a Christmas set list or an Easter set list and you had songs saved in there with mixes, you can load those as well. So... Uh, hit one, two, three to go back, and now we're in the song that we're in uh, called Glory Known. So there's the time down here where we're at in the marker itself. Uh, and so if we tap on the settings, this is where things get really interesting, where we've added a lot of the new features from the iPad and just kind of added them to the iPhone. So first off, we have the click sound. Uh, if you tap on that, there's five uh, different sounds you can choose from. Uh, the, the default sound is the LC click that we have always had, and then we've added those four. Uh, and I like to use digital because it's the re, uh, it's kind of the redone Ableton click sound that we always like to use, so I keep it on that. Uh, but you can use one of those five. Uh, click subdivision is basically if your song is uh, at 70 BPM, for example, and you have X1 chosen, it'll actually play back in 4-4 four, four time or whatever time signature you're in the accented note. So if it's 4-4 four, four and 70 BPM, for example, X1 would play back 70 beats per minute. If you hit X2, it'll subdivide it and actually play back at a feel of 140 beats per minute. So the click, depending on the speed of the song, you can slow it down or speed it up. Uh, and uh, I'm going to leave it on X2 because this song is a slower song, so I like to have the eighth note accent in the click. Uh, generate click dynamically. Uh, you guys know what this is. Most of you who've used the iPad know that if it's turned on, uh, basically it will ignore this click stem here. It's almost like you just turned it off. So um, if you have the click uh, generate click dynamically turned off, it will no longer generate it from the app, but it will listen to the audio stem that's built into this click. So I leave it on because there's a lot of functionality with being able to use these song sections up here and change the click sound and the cue voicing. Uh, so if you have song sections that are in a song, I would recommend that you leave Generate Click dynamically on. Unless you just really like to have your own version of your click, then you can use it. Moving on here, we have the app settings. There's turn expression pedal on and off. If you have an expression pedal hooked up to, say, a Looptimus foot controller or some other controller, you can hook up a expression pedal and turn it on and off to where it receives the uh, information to the volume expression or whatever you have it mapped to there. The jump time is uh, when you are actually looping these sections and you're turning the loop button on and off. Uh, whatever section you're in and depending on what is selected, the end of the section, uh, it will loop when the cursor gets to the end of that section. After one bar, it'll loop after, after the current 
beats in that measure. So if you're in 4-4, four, four, it'll wait four beats. If you're in 6-8, it'll wait six beats, and so on. And after two bars, it'll wait uh, two full measures before it actually will switch to the new song, to the new section that you've actually selected. So um, that's kind of good. I always have the end of the section just, to, just because that's usually how I run tracks. Um, and the cue voices here, the cue sounds, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different ones. We added a Portuguese cue because um, there are some songs, um, we have some Brazilian artists and other countries who speak Portuguese mainly as their language, and we wanted them to have the access to have their own cue voices to be able to hear that. So you can choose Portuguese as a language and play back the cues. I like to use the Meredith Andrews one because I feel like it cuts through the mix a little more, um, but you can use whatever one you want. Uh, dark mode. So before, we just have this lighter, normal theme. Uh, but if you're in a low light setting and you want to kind of invert the colors, or if you just like to have dark mode, you can cut this on and then go back and everything will be uh, a lot darker in the background and some of the colors will be dimmed as well. And it's important to note that once that this dark mode is turned on, it will stay on until you switch it off. So the next time you use Prime, it'll, it'll always be on unless you uh, manually turn dark mode off. So uh, the next section, edit the song. You can now edit markers for custom uploaded tracks to Prime. So if you purchased a song through another uh, website or another company, or if you created your own song and exported it out and uploaded it to Prime Cloud, you'll be able to uh, tap on edit markers there and uh, put in your own sections. And you can see how to do that by tapping on the info button here, and it'll give you... Well, it's not going to show you now because I'm not connected to the internet, but there will be detailed steps on how to do that. Same thing with edit arrangement for any purchased track or tracks that you've had section markers added. Uh, if it sees that there are section markers, you'll be able to edit the arrangement. So um, let's try that now. We're going to hit edit arrangement. And you'll notice that the there's a reset button at the bottom middle that will let you know, hey, uh, you know, there is... Uh, if you want to reset that to the default, you know, you know, you made a, you may have messed up or something, or added a section that you don't really like, you can switch that off and be able to uh, reset the arrangement just as you want, and um, you'll be back to back to the default setting there, the default arrangement. And then there's also a done uh, button in the bottom right, so when you're through mix uh, rearranging the sections or adding sections or deleting sections. You can hit done and it'll save that arrangement to the cloud and you'll always have it when you download the song until you reset it to the default arrangement. So, uh, for example, I can tap on verse 2, double tap rather, and if I don't want it, I can just tap delete and it'll get rid of verse 2. Now you'll see verse 2 is gone. Uh, maybe if I don't want to do the double chorus after verse 3, I can just tap on the second one, delete it. Uh, I can even maybe start with the chorus by dragging it to right after the start. So you can really uh, do what you want and kind of make the arrangement your own. So if you want to reset, just hit reset, and then it'll say, are you sure you want to reset the song arrangement to its original form? You can tap OK, and it'll put it right back. So uh, you can tap Done to save and exit, and you're ready to go. Uh, let's go down now to uh, the MIDI and outputs. Now we've updated it where you can have, uh, for outs map, if you have a, uh, a, a audio interface, such as an iConnectivity or a PreSonus or something that supports iOS compatibility, you can connect that and uh, actually send the outputs down different channels rather than just having uh, the headphone jack send a left and right channel only. The MIDI map, uh, you can hook up a Looptimus just like you could before, but now the difference is you, you aren't stuck with the default mappings. Uh, you can actually map sections of the song to your foot controller or your keyboard controller or whatever you're using uh, and actually delete and reinstall or uh, reset those mappings rather, however you want. Because uh, before you were just stuck to, once you plug the Looptimus in or whatever it is, it, it, all, it only... It would set button one to song one, button two to song two, and you couldn't change that. It was kind of stuck to those default routings. So uh, moving on, pan. Um, now you have the ability to actually turn off and on pan, to move it to, from pan to stereo. Uh, before, everything was already panned, and you couldn't change that. The click and cues were always sent down the left channel, 
and the rest of the blue stems were always sent down the right channel, but now you have the ability to, to make these stereo. And what's cool about this is I'm gonna leave it in pan and play the bridge. And you'll notice this is pretty quiet. Uh, but what's going on here is just what I said. It's taking uh, the click and the cues and it's putting them it through the left channel. And then all the blue stems, uh, even if there are like, for, let's say an electric guitar has a hard electric guitar panned left and another electric guitar hard panned right, it's grouping those together and panning them all to the right channel. So it's when it's coming through your system, you're, you're hearing both left and right, but it's being pushed through one channel on the right-hand side. Whereas if we go here to stereo, uh, now if we play it, you'll notice it's a lot louder. And also we've re-engineered the stereo sound uh, before. This, this works for iPad as well. We changed it to where uh, instead of taking both channels and pushing them down uh, left and right, what we actually did was re-engineered it to where if a guitar is recorded in only the left channel, you'll only hear it in the left channel. If a guitar was recorded in only the right channel, you'll only hear it in the right channel. So it's true stereo and not being grouped and pushed down both both channels. Uh, so you'll, you'll actually get a rich, wide, and full sound using stereo, which is really awesome. Uh, and so that's kind of all the um, the differences that we've added, all the functionality that we've added. I encourage you to kind of just test this out, guys, and see uh, what you love about it and let us know uh, if there's things that you want us to add. Uh, we're totally up for that. We have some great ideas that we've heard from the community, and we want to be able to implement these things. And uh, we, we might have some more training in the uh, coming up soon on using multiple outputs with this. Some people have asked if it's compatible to iConnectivity and some of the other multiple interfaces, uh, multiple output interfaces. And the answer is yes, we have had successful testing with that. So if you do have an iConnect 4 or like a PreSonus Audio Box 2 or something like that, you, you should be able to connect it and use it because it is iOS compatible. You may just need to download the respective company's apps if there are any apps that go along to kind of route the audio. Uh, how they would need to, re to to route it respectively so they can get the channels down the right output settings that you would need. And guys, that's pretty much it. Um, you can kind of just explore this, and we hope that you enjoy it as much as we are. We know that a lot of these um, settings and stuff you guys have been waiting on for a long time, so we're glad to finally get these out to you so that you can use it for people that don't really have an iPad, but you can use them for your iPhone. And we hope that this kind of revolutionizes your worship set and adds a lot of functionality for where you are. And we have more, a lot more, on the way soon. So, uh, again, my name is Jansen. I'm the Director of Training and Support for LoopCommunity.com. And uh, for now, uh, we hope you enjoy this version of Prime, version 3.2. Check it out now in the App Store. Update your iPhone and the Prime software. And uh, happy looping. We'll see you later.